Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and this is Vision OS. It's booting up in the simulator as Apple has made it available for developers to take a look at it through the overall simulator to see what it's like since the device isn't available yet. It's now booting up here. And you can see we're in the main environment now. Now there are some controls within the simulator. You can see here in the bottom right, we have the option to select. We can click and drag to tilt the camera so we can move it around this way. We also have the option here to sort of move back and forth or up and down and then also tilt. And additionally, we can sort of move in and out as though we were on a dolly. So you can see that move there. If we go back to select and then at the top here, we have a couple different buttons as well. We have the home button, so it gets rid of the different app icons on the display. We also have the option to save screen, capture pointer, capture keyboard, simulated scenes, and then reset camera. So if we want to reset, that's the main reset. If we click this button here, we have some different simulated scenes. So we have living room day and night. We also have kitchen day and night and then museum day and night. We'll go back to living room day and let's take a look at some of these apps. So you've already heard some of the sounds. If we take a look here, we have settings. Of course, if we click on settings, it, it opens up and now we have settings. Now we have some controls here as well at the bottom. Typically we would look at this with our eyes to see what we have. So we can move this around. We would, sort of pinch with our fingers and move this. We also have the option to close it. You'll see here if maybe we go into Safari, we'll give it a second to load. We're on Apple's website. We can move it around. It becomes translucent. And again, we can close it. But if we move to the edge, we can resize it. Not all apps allow for resizing, but a lot of them do. So you'll see we can resize that here. And then the controls go back to the middle. Again, we can cl close that if we want to and go into another app. So on the left here, we have our different apps. We have an option for people and then also environments. This would use the digital crown to maybe go to Mount hood and bring that into your current environment. However, I'm not seeing the controls for the digital crown yet to bring that into the environment. So if you've actually found that, let me know in the comments below, but it would be great to see what that looks like. Now, if we go back to our apps here, let's take a closer look at a few of these. So maybe if we go into Safari, We'll go here. We'll click in the top. It brings up a keyboard. And if we tilt down, we can see what that looks like. We can type here, YouTube. We'll go to my YouTube channel and on my channel here, of course, you can just type, you can point over this just by looking at this typically is how this would work. So you could just look and maybe look at emojis, pinch your fingers together and see different emoji here that you want to select. If we want to close the keyboard, we can just simply close it. Now, if we tilt back up here, you can also use a controller to make these controls a little bit easier, tilt back up. Then we'll go back to our selection tool. And maybe we want to move this over to the side for now. We can move it wherever we'd like. We'll move it over here, leave it, and then we'll go back home and bring up our apps. Now you may have seen above our apps here is a little down arrow. If we click on that, we have sort of a control center that shows our battery status, as you can see there. And then we have some options. So we have home, we have our environment. We also have control center here. So there's kind of a control center within a control center and then notifications. So again, if we go back, click on this little tiny icon here and go into control center within control center, we have some other options. So of course your typical things, we have an iOS where we have Wi-Fi, airplane mode, and then also Bluetooth. We have volume. We also have our focus modes, but we have a guest mode. We can adjust our font size. And then of course, airplay and search. And now according to Steve Mosier, we'll actually have maybe something that looks like visual search that's been found. So maybe we'll be able to look at different things in our environment and search based off that. We don't have any additional details, but we could see more in the future. If we go to guest mode, you'll see that we have some options here that allow others to use your Apple vision pro once started, the mode will end if it's not put on within five minutes. You can set up a passcode and then click start. And then someone else can use this without having access to all of your photos and different things. Again, like I said, we have different text size adjustments. If you want to use those. And then if we click out of that exit, you can see the overall environment here. Now, if we go into settings, let's take a look at that. You can see here how this overlays the window in the background. 
And then if we click on this, it brings it forward, go back, click, it brings the other window forward. We can click and drag here, or if we were to pinch and flick up, we could actually see our different apps just by scrolling. And then of course we can go into different settings. I hope some of this visual look comes to iOS as well, but you can see it looks very familiar. If you're on iOS, you've got people, environments, appearance, you have day, night, and automatic, of course, notifications, focus modes, FaceTime accessibility. So you'll have accessibility modes here as well for things with motion and everything else. And then control center, Siri, privacy and security, display, storage. Then we also have passwords, game center and wallet and developer. So very similar to what we have already, very familiar with a search box up here. Now, in theory, you'll be able to click here and you could either type or just speak what you want to say. So that would be great in the future. Let's close that. We'll go into our home again, bring up our apps and you can see here we have photos. There's not really anything to see here, but we could move this down here. Let's maybe bring in our apps again and we'll open Freeform. Freeform will be able to draw in real time. We'll just go into this one here. And then of course we have Freeform with our different tab table, select a pen, and then we could select and, and draw on the screen with our finger here. So that's something you'll be able to do. Maybe we'll move that out of the way over here and then let's open one more. We'll go back in and let's go into our compatible apps and open the calendar. So we'll give it a second to load. And we also have the option to sort of have a vertical or portrait style and landscape mode here. So depending on how we want to set this up and how large we want to make it. Now, if we want to look around the room, these stay put as we move. So if we look around this room, we come back, they're exactly where we left our apps. If we were to move closer to them, you'll see here, if we move closer, it moves with your environment. Now, some of these apps don't stay the way you would expect, such as the window on the right with my YouTube channel, but in general, it looks to work pretty much like you would expect in general. But the nice thing is they have depth as well. So you'll see there's depth there to each one of these where the actual Safari window is sort of behind the calendar window as we move around. So if we move back this way, you'll see there's some depth there with it. And then we'll spin back around. It gives you an idea of what it looks like. Let me reset the camera there. So that shows you how all of the environments work. And of course you could just walk up to these. You'll see how it casts a shadow over the, the background and just looks really great. You can even layer these. Of course, if we click on one behind it and then we close this, it's very much what you're familiar with, but also in a real environment. So this is something we'll see in the future. Of course, once vision pro is released. Now you'll see if we make this full screen, it actually fills the room. Of course we can adjust the overall size. Maybe we want to watch the video full screen and you can see through it as it's translucent. Of course that gives you an idea of how vision OS works. I think it's pretty great overall. However, I'm not sure it offers more than what we typically get with VR at this point, other than that it has AR built in at the same point. So that's everything with vision OS. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Is this something you would use regularly yourself or maybe Maybe would you rather just use the real world environment? Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more about vision OS, let me know there as well. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.